So after a bit of a hiatus from League, I'm doing a Ziggs only to Diamond with my favorite strategy. I'll potentially be uploading more replay videos as I make my climb to Diamond, and maybe more beyond that. Let me know in the comments if there are any video ideas you would like to see. So the first thing I want to say is that if you're truly serious about ELO and Ziggs, then bot lane Ziggs is far superior. But if you are like me and enjoy saying, pass me the damn ball and play mid lane point guard Ziggs, then you have come to the right place. The first step here is by far the most important step in executing any Ziggs strategy correctly, let alone this strategy. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is head on over to your closest socially distanced basketball court and hit some three pointers. Unfortunately, we're in lockdown and I don't really have access to a real basketball net. So instead I use a basket and a ball. Ah, shit. I think the basket is rigged or something, but look, you can always dunk, all right? Watch this. Mm. Once you've mastered your three pointers, it's time to head to the locker room to create your game plan. So the general game plan is this. Go as aggressive as possible early game and snowball. Modern League of Legends games end very quickly and they're decided very quickly as well. So the most important part of the game is really just like the first five to 10 minutes of the game. This is why you have to take something like Scorch. Why take, uh, why wait 20 minutes for a rune when the game's already over by then. The next point is that assassins and basically all meta champions nowadays have infinite sustain, infinite jumps later on into the game. And this is very hard for Ziggs to deal with. So you really don't want to get to that point where uh, assassins are just jumping around, dodging all your abilities. The next point is that Baron hard counters Ziggs. If the game gets to 20 minutes and you haven't taken over the game by then, and instead maybe your opponents have a lead and then they take Baron, there's nothing you can do about it. Your wave clear becomes useless. And another point is that dragons are really good for securing leads. So if you can get uh, an early lead in the first five minutes of the game, maybe secure that first dragon, then you can snowball that into securing the next dragon and over and over. This makes it so that even if you mess up, even if you have, even if you go like 3-0 and in lane, right? Or 5-0 and in lane or whatever it is. And then you give a kill away by accident. Uh, and then you give gold away. You start losing control of the game. But hey, you got three dragons or maybe four dragons, right? At this like 20 minute, 25 minute mark. And now it doesn't matter that you gave your lead away because these dragons are going to save you. So if you give away your lead and now both teams are, are at a four, five, six item uh, stage of the game, then it doesn't matter because you have soul or close to soul. This is why early game champions are just so important. You want to get that lead, get that snowball, and you there, there's not much that can go wrong if you get those dragons. So that's why I take things like airy. You just want to always auto attack your opponent as much as possible, proc this a lot. What happens with Comet is that Comet often misses very often especially against all these jumping champions nowadays right in the meta everyone jumps so you, this is gonna miss like maybe more than half the time even especially mid to late game like this is gonna this is gonna miss when you really want it to hit whereas airy it's always gonna hit even though it's less damage on average i find that airy does uh, more damage overall and it's more it's more guaranteed damage so when you need the damage it'll hit and then here you'll see that I go Corrupting Potion in my games, and then I go Time Warp Tonic with uh, Biscuit Delivery. And this just lets you go really hard in the paint, uh, lets you hit lots of, lots of shots, and lets you live very often too. And same thing with this, this 10% attack speed just lets you hit more, uh, more free throws. Alternatively, what I like to do is actually go Cheap Shot and one of these AP things. And this just makes it so that you can really assassinate people in the mid game and do really high burst damage. In terms of summoner spells, I like going either Ignite or Exhaust. Exhaust helps you really hit your combos. And then Ignite just really helps you pressure the lane and uh, break some ankles early on. And now number three, it's time to get on the court. So now I'm just gonna go through some ideal scenarios uh, and the general overall strategy, which again is play as aggressive, early as possible and then snowball. So here I'm starting off just shoving the wave. You can either play this two ways. You can either shove the wave 
instantly and just kind of ignore your opponent until the wave is, is shoved. Or you can always focus on hitting your opponent and not shove the wave, right? So you always focus on hitting your opponent with Q. That's one way to play. Or you shove the wave. Now here we're going very aggressive. You see, you just don't care. You just throw the two pointers, keep throwing two pointers, go hard in the paint. If he starts posting up on you, don't worry. You have corrupting potion and you can survive. And corrupting potion really lets you win trades. It gives you a lot of health in lane. And gives that a little bit of extra damage. Hit that two pointer on him. Knocked him trying to say hello. I hit him with the fade away. By the way, this is the fade away, okay? When you. When a jungler comes over here, you press the W and you shoot that two pointer in midair. That's the fade away. Okay, here we go. Pop you with a counter. And now it's time to break some ankles. Bang. So this goes ideal in lane. You go very aggressive, trade a lot, trade a lot, go hard in the paint, and then snowball your way to victory. Okay, we'll see again here. We got him low again. Bang, he jumps out. We throw a two-pointer, long two-pointer, long two-pointer there, not quite a three. But... And now I'll just show another game, another early lane phase. So this time I decided not to shove the wave. I just decided, okay, I'm just going to try to hit more cues on my opponent. And remember, you're really trying to just hit your opponent with every single Q, every single ability. You really have to press that early early game advantage that Ziggs has. He really is strong early game. You just, it's very difficult to pull off, but once you do it, once you're able to do it, you can play aggressive and get a lot of leads. So here we go. Katarina jumps on us. We hit him with the ankle breaker. Hit him with the two-pointer right here. Okay, here we go, another lane phase. So this time we decide to go for the hard shove. Shoving the lane. Morgana decides not to step up. Kind of letting us just take our shots. And there you go, hit that two-pointer on the turret. See how you hit that two-pointer right there? Don't even aim for Morgana, just aim for the turret. Aim for the turret, it'll explode. Bang, two points. Okay, wave crash, just hit him with the two-pointer again. You're just throwing twos, man. In land, you're just throwing two. Two after two after two after two after two. And eventually, eventually they'll break like this. There you go. Level up the ankle breaker. And there you go. Didn't even have to use Ignite there. Okay, fast forward here. We've killed Morgana a grand total of seven times or something. And now we're just going to take down that mid turret. And now this is, this is key. So after this point, right, let's say you've dominated lane. Uh, what you want to do is you want to step back to the three-point line and swing it over to your team, okay? You want to swing the ball over, make a swing play so that they can start racking up some points too because what they're going to do is they're going to start double-teaming you and triple-teaming you. So you want to do, step back to the three-point line, swing it over to your team, and they're wide open. And there we go. A more later stage in the game, which is around 18 minutes in this case, we've gotten all the outer turrets, and really it's just about... Uh, still making the aggressive play, taking down all objectives, uh, making sure you leave them nothing, take all their camps, right? There's just, a, there, there is a lot to this stage of the game, the late game, to snowballing correctly. Um, but I think the most important thing is just knowing Zig's mechanics, which is the most difficult part of playing Zig's. The overall strategy is simple, right? But simple doesn't mean easy. So it's simple in that all you want to do is play aggressive with Ziggs early and snowball the game. But it's not so easy to do this. So one thing I forgot to mention are the items. Remember, if the goal is to be really aggressive early game and just take over the game, then uh, you really have to favor something bursty, I think. You just want to kill enemies instantly. If an assassin jumps in, you want to make sure that they're dead instantly. You want to leave them no time to be able to jump around and... Uh, do their stuff and sustain and all that and then second you can go you can go any damage item second third fourth really so there it is play aggressive early hit your two pointers snowball hit some three pointers make swing plays to bot lane or top lane after you get the mid turret it's a simple strategy but it's not easy because it takes a lot of practice to get the mechanics right and i'll be going over more mechanical tricks in the future but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to play this hyper-aggressive zig style.
which is how I currently play Ziggs. So thanks for watching, and let me know if there are any video ideas or anything I missed. And don't forget to flick that wrist when you shoot your three-pointers. Peace!